Our video today is about the kinetics lab, and we're going to go through each part so you can see how to do the calculations. For the first part of the kinetics lab, you're trying to figure out the order of the reaction. So let's take a look at the half-lives, because that's how you're measuring it. Here's the formula for each half-life, for zero, first, second order. Basically what we are doing are taking measurements of the half-life at two different concentrations. And an easy way to figure out the order is to take the ratio. Now let's say your two concentrations were 0.2 and 0.4 molar. So say for zero order, you're taking the ratio using this equation uh, and plugging in the initial concentration, CO. You plug that in, you'll notice that everything drops out and you get a ratio of two. If you do the same thing for uh, the first order half-life, there's no concentration involved at all. Everything cancels, you get a one. If you do that for the second order half-life, you put in your concentrations, you get a half. So uh, based on your numbers that you get, you can tell if it's going to be zero, first, or second order when you put in the ratios and, and you measure the half-life. So you get the same half-life, is one twice as much as the other, or is one half as much? The next part of the kinetics post-lab, you're trying to figure out the activation energy. You know the Arrhenius equation, that's this one, that the rate constant equals A times E raised to the activation energy, E sub A, times RT. Uh, you can put that in a different form. Uh, through a little bit of derivation where the natural log of k equals this uh, constant here essentially times 1 over t plus the natural log of a. This uh, form is helpful because it's in the form of a line which we can plot and we're going to do that in just a minute. So you can see we have y equals m, m is how we're going to find the activation energy, x is 1 over t and then the y-intercept b is natural log of a. So here's what you're going to do. You have two measured quantities basically from this part. The temperature and the half-life. Okay, so the, the first and the fourth column are measured. The rest are calculated. So from the temperature, you're going to get the, uh, in Celsius, you're going to get the Kelvins. And then from there, you're going to take the reciprocal of that. Why do you do that? Because you, you need one over temperature for the plot of a line. Then, you remember, you've also found this. So next, let's assume this is first order, okay? So you determine from the other part of the lab that it's first order. So you're using the first order uh, half-life equation. And so I'm basically plugging the natural log of two divided by this column here. So that's where these numbers come from. And then finally, I'm finding the natural log of k. So that's the natural log of all these numbers right here, the natural log of the previous column. Why do I need the natural log of k? Because that's my y-axis. So again, I'm plotting natural log of k versus 1 over t. That's y versus x. I'm going to show you in a moment what that graph looks like. Remember that I'm trying to find activation energy. And so I had uh, this whole table that we generated and now I'm going to plot natural log of k versus 1 over time because I uh, want over temperature because I want to get the slope and the slope will lead me to the activation energy. Let's take a look at this. Again, you're going to have different data than I do. This just gives you an idea what it looks like. Natural log of k, you got 1 over t on the horizontal. Uh, here's what my line looks like. And then here in this kind of circle, oblong circle here, as I said, the slope is e sub a over r. Okay, so that's what we know. I find the slope, so you want to do this, say, in a spreadsheet somehow. And I got negative 2451. So then I come over here to my calculation. Uh, I know that 2451 equals this number, or if I solve for e sub a, it's negative times my negative slope times r. And remember r is 8.3145 joules per mole kelvin. I need this r to stay in the right units and to give me joules at the end. So I ended up getting 20,400 joules per mole, or 20.4 kilojoules per mole and thus found my activation energy from doing a plot. The last part of this lab, I want to find K, the rate constant, in this case at 25 degrees C, or 298K. So what you may have noticed that, that this temperature might not be one of the ones you've collected. So for example, we collected a reading at 20 degrees C. We found K, if you watch the previous part with the table, to be 0 0.00231. We also found temperature at 20 degrees, at 30 degrees C, 
and we found k to be 0 0.00301. So, but this is at 25, so we expect the number to be within those bounds. So how do you find k at any given number? Well, again, we know the, from the slope previously, we found the activation energy. You need a to plug it into the Arrhenius equation. So how do you find a? You're going to go back to Excel uh, or the spreadsheet, whatever that you use. Remember that the y-intercept is the natural log of a. So you can either calculate or just read straight off your old graph what the y-intercept is. And you know it's equal to the natural log of a, so you take e raised to this power. Uh, in the case of our data, or the data I used, I got 9.70. So get that from your graph, and then it's pretty straightforward. So here's the Arrhenius equation with a, e raised to the negative activation energy, 20,400. Make sure it's in joules, because your r is in joules, 8.3145. And then we have 298k, and then... In this case, I got a k of 0.00258, which is between the two rate constants uh, that I mentioned earlier that were between 20 degrees and 30 degrees, the two that I have measured. So this makes a lot of sense.